Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel and a new video. Today we'll be repainting a doll you see only yellow art supplies. And oh boy, this was both the scariest and also hardest of the challenges so far because all my yellow supplies are just so close together in tone like you can see here. We have a few watercolor pencils, a few shades of acrylic paint and then I have three different chalk pastels but they were all very close together in tone so yeah. I also had some shimmery mica powder that was more yellow than gold so I included that. For doll hair I had some acrylic yarn that I can brush out and straighten and I had two shades of yellow glitter that both look pretty toxic to me and then I had some pearls and also some rhinestones in yellow. I also include a bit of white paint and a white pencil. This is just for the whites of the eyes and the highlights, not for mixing. So here's a little swat test of the different materials. And to be honest, I was not feeling very confident going into this because the tones are just so close together. So I was like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? A few of you requested that I use a doll with a darker skin tone for the yellow one. And that made sense to make the color stand out, so I used this one, which was the darkest doll in any color that I had. And I really just like the fact that she had an open mouth smile, which you don't get often. And she's bought second hand. Her original hair color was really perfect for the challenge, but unfortunately, since she was already used, the hair was just a tangled mess, which it usually is, so I had to get rid of it, so we'll add new hair later. And then I removed the face of the doll and paired with, with Mr. Super Clear, so we can get started on the repaint. Firstly, I filled in the teeth with white again because it got smudged when I removed the lips. And from there, then things just got hard. I really struggled. I used the lighter yellow pencil to sketch on some the eye shape. And I decided that I wanted to keep her eyes essentially sort of brown, just so everything wouldn't be yellow on yellow. Because the tones just weren't that far apart. I didn't have a proper darker tone so I could make, you know, good eyelashes and pupils and stuff so therefore I kept the brown of the eyes for both like the shadow and also the pupil and just added lighter yellow in like the iris part around it and of course I filled in the eye whites. This was by far the hardest of the color challenges so far because not only did I not have a good range with darkness within the colors also the pencils wouldn't really apply well onto the doll's skin because the doll is a dark brown. I figured, oh, you know, the lighter pencil will stand out and, you know, it'll give me more variety so I could make like a darker tone by using different pencils directly on the skin. But they just wasn't depositing much color at all. Like you could barely see them and I had primed the doll properly. So there was scrap to the plastic. It was just a mix of the doll's original color and the lightness of the pencil. So it just wasn't really working out. So whenever I used the pencils, I had to use the watercolor effect of them, which is cool. You can get opacity, but it's much like acrylic paint. And in that sense, it just ends up being very, very harsh and just very defined and I wanted something a little softer. So for the eyes, I ended up filling in the iris part, as I mentioned, with two tones of yellow using the watercolor effect of the pencils. But once that was dry, I actually used my X-Acto knife to make little scratches in it to take away some of the color and make little lines so some of the brown could peek through. So it could be more, you know, like her eyes was essentially brown. So I had to come up with tricks like that to try to get different like finishes and different opacities and stuff like that because I felt just so confined. I also struggle with the eyebrows. Usually I like to do them using the pencil because then you can make them 
you know, going from light to dark, and you can also make individual strokes. So close up, they'll seem more like real eyebrows because there isn't just one solid color. There's actually, actually you know, little strokes from little hairs. But I just couldn't get that to work because I used acrylic paint for the eyebrows, and I tried to make it in strokes. But if I thin down the paint to make it you know, thin enough so my thinnest pencil could make a nice fine stroke, then it was not opaque enough and I would have to do so many layers that it would clump together anyway. And when I used the paint, you know, unthinned, it was just too thick, so it ended up being all goopy. So I just ended up having two mm, almost completely filled in eyebrows. Anyway, I tried to make the edges a little jagged so they weren't too smooth, but yeah, that was a struggle too. Originally, I had planned to make her lips in glitter, like I did with one of the others, because I just thought it would be cool. But once I like held the glitter up to her face, I was like, it would just look so strange to have so light lips compared to her skin tone. I feel it would make her look a bit ill. So I scratched that idea and I chose to use, use the shimmery mica powder in build up a few layers on the lips, just so it would have a yellow sheen instead because I thought it would just be a little more graceful, I don't know. Essentially because the, the eyes are just so yellow that if she had yellow bold lips too, it, just, it would just have been a lot. If you've seen my previous videos in general, you'll know that I prefer to shade the eyes, both the actual iris but also the eye whites, just for dimension. And in the other color challenges, even Though they were all monochrome, I felt there was some depth to it once I shaded in those colors. But with the yellow on the white, it just didn't really do anything. So her eyes seemed just so open and flat to me because I couldn't shade them properly. So yeah, that was a bit of a letdown, but I was actually pleasantly surprised once I actually got to the end and painted on the eyelashes. I chose to make the eyelashes a tightly, slightly lighter yellow than her eyeliner so they would stand out against it and once the eyelashes was on I was actually pleasantly surprised because it did pull the whole look together and make her look a little more right because up until that point I was like oh my what did I do to this poor doll but then I was like okay it's all right it's all right The yellow pastels didn't really show up much on the doll's skin, so all I used them for was really to almost highlight or bronze to, you know, just give her a nice shine to her skin. And I used a white pencil to add just a good highlight and the white paint for highlights of the eyes before I sealed her in the final time. After it was all dry, it was time for hair. And I've been experimenting a lot with different hairstyles during these challenges and I've enjoyed that a lot. So for this one, I decided to brush out the hair and then braid it. And I used my, used my straight iron to curl them around a brush. So each strand was curly. And then I glued them along the scalp of the doll to be like cornrow blades that then I ended in curls. I don't know, I was really excited about the hair. I don't know if that made me weird or not, but I thought that was a lot of fun. Before gluing on the braids, I did paint the doll's scalp yellow, just in case any of the skin would otherwise peek through. And it was a little hard trying to get a neat edge around the hairline, trying to get the braids glued down without them unraveling, but I did my best. And as I said, I thought it was actually a lot of fun. After the hair was all in place, I glued rhinestones and also pearl accessories onto her ears for earrings. Because there's a lot of space there, because I did actually want to keep her original ears. Which was one of the reasons why I wanted her hair to be relatively flat on top of her head, so you can actually see the 
original ears because in the pink doll I kept her pointy ears but they completely disappeared in her curly hair. So this one, I actually thought you should see the ears for once. To incorporate the glitter also, I decided to give her a glitter tattoo on her shoulder. So I first used acrylic paint just to draw out a little swirly design and then I went over it with glue and I covered it with the two different shades of yellow glitter. As the final detail, I glaze the eyes, which really brings out the color, and also glaze the lips. I don't always do this, but for this one, it really paid off because she had the shimmery powder on her lips, so that really stood out and made it look really, really nice. So here she is all done. As I mentioned, I did struggle with this challenge. I thought it was pretty hard, but once she's all assembled, I actually think she looks kind of nice. So I'm actually pretty proud of what I accomplished in this one, even though, you know, it was a struggle. So let me know what you think in the comment below. And if you have any other ideas for videos, challenges, whatever, whatever you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments because I really would like to make things that you guys would enjoy to see. And after this one, some of you guys requested to see all the dolls together, so here they are. It is a kind of a weird rainbow, but I dig it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this little series of videos. And I'll see you guys in a new one with soon. Bye!